Hello everybody and welcome to the third in a series of beginners C sharp tutorials. In today's lesson we are going to be learning about variables. Uh, what are variables? They are small objects in computer memory that can store a certain kind of data. Now it is important to know that there are two big types of variables. The built-in types or intrinsic types and the ones which you create yourself. Uh, in Object Oriented Programming or OOP, being able to declare your own variables is very important. But today we are going to be focusing solely on the intrinsic types which you will run into most. <coughs> it is also important to know that there are different types of variables in C -sharp for different types of data. For example, you'll want to store numerical values into integers or doubles, and you'll want to store text data into strings. So um, <clears throat> I'll write down a few examples. So first we have the char variable. So to declare, so <clears throat> first to declare a variable, you first have to type in its type, and then we type in a name. We can also immediately give a value to our va variable by entering the equal sign and entering a value. I'm going to give the my char sign the at symbol. Next up, we have the boolean. A uh, boolean is a logical uh, variable that can store only two values, true or false. You'll use booleans a lot in if and else structures, but we'll run into these later. For now, just remember that they can only store true or false. Next up is the integer, or int. Integers can store numerical data. Uh, examples of integers are 5, 200, minus 7, uh, but they cannot store decimal numbers, so they can only store whole numbers. If you type in a decimal number into an integer, it will automatically be converted to a double. So next up is the double. A double, just like an int, can contain numerical uh, data, but it can also store decimal data. So examples of doubles would be 5.25, 7.8, Next up is the decimal. A decimal is a lot like a boolean, but a decimal cannot store values that are uh, lower than zero, so you can only store whole numbers. Whereas a double can store values that are below zero as well just as an integer again. Uh, next up, we have the string variable. A string is a variable that is used to store text. Now it is important to know that if you want to enter text into a string, you'll have to place that text between quotation marks. If you do not do so, Visual Studio will not recognize the value as text and it will um, result in an error. <clears throat> so those are the most important types of variables for now. Uh, next up I will demonstrate a small program that will demonstrate why variables are so important. Okay, so as you can see, I've created a small program that contains two text views and a button. When I click a button, I want this label to display the text, Welcome, my username, your employee number is my username. So I'll type in my name, Mike, employee number is 007, and when I press the click me button, you'll see that the text hello Mike, your employee number is 007 has been displayed. If I type in something else like John 9001, you can see 
that the text has changed. So this is but one of the advantages of using variables. Your program will be able to display and store dynamic data. So as an example, we are going to create this program that I've created here ourselves. To do that, open your Visual Studio and create a new c -sharp project. And call it Chapter 3, Welcome. Now, if you are unsure how to design and code in Visual Studio, uh, please refer back to the Chapter 2 lessons. You will learn all you need to know about designing forms for beginners there. So, we've, so right now, um, design your form, give it a rectangular shape, give it a button, two text views, And, a few, and three labels, which you'll be using to display some text. So go ahead, design a form until it looks like a bit, a bit decent. There, that's good enough. Now select your labels and change their text, va text values to employee name and employee number. Uh, do the same for the button change its text value to click me <clears throat> and next we're going to name these widgets so select your text view navigate up to its name value and give it a name txt amp name do the same for the text view below it. Change its name to txt emp number. Same goes for the button. Its name will be changed to btn click me. Uh, last but not least, select label 3, navigate to its visible property and set it to false, which as you recall is a boolean value. <clears throat> so next we're going to add some functionality because if we run our program now and we click our button nothing will happen 